Are you interested in knowing whether polyphasic sleeping is dangerous? In the last video in this series, we talked about the cognitive performance of adapted polyphasic sleepers. And in this video, we'll take a more in-depth look at what research actually says about sleeping a shorter duration. And how this information can be applied when discussing the question of whether polyphasic sleeping is dangerous. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower and I'm a main author of polyphasic.net, the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. So in this video I want to emphasize two scientific articles and what they say about the life expectancy of people who sleep on shorter sleep schedules. First I want to point out that this information is not directly applicable to polyphasic sleepers because as has been shown in previous videos, adapted polyphasic sleepers will get the necessary amounts of slow wave sleep and REM sleep and will only reduce the light sleep stage. Um, but because of this we should be able to be on the safer side of the spectrum when talking about these articles but let's first examine the papers and see what they say. So the first paper we'll talk about today is called Sleep Duration and All-Cause Mortality. A systematic review and meta-analysis of prospective studies. And it's written by Capuccio et al. In this paper, the sleep duration on and life expectancy of people is compared. And the results are pretty interesting. So what did they conclude? Well, People who slept less than 6 hours a day had a 12% higher chance of dying prematurely than people who slept around 7 to 8 hours a day. But people who slept more than 9 hours a day had a 30% higher chance to die prematurely than people who slept normal amounts. This is already pretty telling that is clearly worse for people to sleep more than it is to sleep less. And you need to remember that these people are mostly monophasic. The next paper we'll look at is called Insomnia and Mortality, a meta-analysis. And it's written by Lovato and Lack. The paper compared the mortality of people suffering from insomnia, which is characterized with having issues to fall asleep and them getting less sleep than they actually need. The results of this paper show that when comparing people who suffer from insomnia to people who are healthy, there is no statistical difference between the mortality of these people. These are pretty interesting results and I'm in no way saying that polyphasic sleep should be compared to people suffering from insomnia as again, polyphasic sleepers are going to get the necessary amounts of slow wave sleep and REM sleep as monophasic people who sleep as much as they need do. Still, if some similarities could be drawn here, I would say that polyphasic sleepers don't need to worry about dying prematurely. Unfortunately, no long-term studies have been done on the damage produced by polyphasic sleepers long-term, so we need to rely on monophasic studies to draw the conclusions here. Okay, if you want to debunk polyphasic sleep on this topic, I'd say that you need to show evidence that reducing light sleep leads to a premature death. Um, and that's all for today. In the next video, we will talk about the circadian rhythm and how that could be used to show that polyphasic sleeping is dangerous. Take care people and remember to have pleasant naps. Hey, I'm Aka Hana, an editor on this channel. If this video matters to you, click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get the latest info on mastering your sleep. We want to help you work towards the life you want on your terms and in your time. Please consider donating via our secure Ko-fi page as this helps sustain website costs and data gathering efforts across our communities. If you have any questions, check the links below and contact us directly. Thank you.